We had old development goals expiring this year in 2015, focusing on poverty reduction in developing countries. Up to 2030, we will now get a next generation of expanded development goals. Firstly, we have to continue the fight against poverty and reduce social inequality. Not only developing countries, but developed countries too, must improve their situation when it comes to inequality. The second element means keeping sustainability, environment and prosperity within the guardrails of the Earth system. Poverty reduction cannot succeed without taking these issues into account. Thirdly, it is crucial that the new goals are a universal guiding principle. Not only developing countries must take on obligations and meet objectives, industrialized countries too must meet objectives and accept that they will be judged at the international level. For example, in the fields of resource efficiency and the fight against inequality. The fourth element is that all this can only be achieved if we develop a global cooperation culture and cooperation architecture, because these problems cannot be overcome without global cooperation. Global environmental changes can threaten the livelihoods of current and future generations in particular the livelihoods of vulnerable people. In this century, and this is completely new in the history of humanity, we can bring about a change in the Earth system which could lead to tipping points. We could irreversibly change elements of the Earth system in a direction that could possibly make it difficult to guarantee the livelihoods of 9 billion people. From this perspective, global environmental change is a major challenge for sustainable human development. In our work, we've looked at the entire Earth system, asking which elements of the Earth system are an essential prerequisite for ensuring that 9 billion people on this planet can live a good life. And our results show that virtually all the resources we use, and almost all the drivers that lead to dangerous levels of global environmental change, must be reduced to zero by 2070. We call this the zero target for 2070, the neutrality goal for 2070. We must develop a global economy and styles of consumption that allow us to achieve this zero target. We've looked at the Earth system and asked which guardrails must be complied with to make a good life possible for 9 billion people. We identified five such guardrails. The first guardrail relates to the emissions we release into the atmosphere that lead to global warming. It's also a matter of stopping ocean acidification, which is closely linked to changes in the climate system and emissions. The second important guardrail is that we're overloading ecosystems and undermining their functioning. We must end this process. The third important guardrail is that we must stop the degradation of soils that are used for agriculture to ensure that we remain able to feed the world's population. The fourth important guardrail is to stop the release of long-lived pollutants into the atmosphere, the oceans and soils. We are examining this topic by focusing on the example of plastics and other toxic substances that burden ecosystems. The fifth guardrail, which is hardly heard in public discussion, is the limited availability of phosphorus. Phosphorus is a key building block of agricultural productivity. Productivity will decline without phosphorus. We have no substitute for phosphorus. We must change the way we use it and must learn to recycle phosphorus in order to ensure long-term availability. Otherwise, agricultural production for 9 billion people will become very difficult. We must transform our economic and production system. We talk of a great transformation of the global economy, and we compare this with two other major transformations in the history of humanity, to make it clear that this is a considerable challenge that we have to implement. 
The first analogy is the Industrial Revolution, 250 years ago, which catapulted humanity into an entirely new era. The second analogy is the Neolithic Revolution, about 10,000 years ago, when people invented agriculture. The current third great transformation of humanity must enable us to develop a production and economic system capable of feeding 9 billion people allowing them a good lifestyle, but all within the limits of the Earth system. If we exceed these limits, we will be jeopardizing future generations. And if we want to achieve this great transformation, we must do three things, all in a relatively short time, and that's a big challenge. Firstly, we must decarbonize the global economy. We must develop an economy that can function without greenhouse gas emissions, change our energy and agricultural systems, stop deforestation worldwide, and change the way we manage and build our cities. 70% of energy-related greenhouse gas emissions come from cities, and we're currently experiencing a doubling of the urban population. How we build our cities is of key importance. That's the first dimension, decarbonization. The second dimension is that we must learn to recycle almost all the substances and resources that we use today. We need a circular flow economy on a global scale. We must close all recycling loops. If we want to achieve the zero targets by 2070 concerning non-renewable resources that might no longer be available to subsequent generations, we must learn either to completely stop using these resources or to recycle them. A circular flow economy is the second important element. The third dimension is less economic and technological and requires fewer institutional reforms. It's all about ourselves, our lifestyles, our understanding of welfare or well-being. We must understand that welfare and a good life mean more than raising the gross national product. When people are asked what they consider important, you hear words like security, trust, social networks, or identifying with the place where you live. We need concepts of welfare that do justice to what people actually say they want. We must also develop an understanding of welfare that shows responsibility towards the present generation as well as towards future generations. This is connected with the Global Development Goals. We need an understanding of welfare that is universalizable and can also be implemented by future generations.